It is with a wonderful afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to our sunset safari out here in the northern part of the Serengeti National Park. My name is Stephen, all the way from the Malakuri Hills Camp. On the background, that's a water beast. Well, it's just not only one. There's plenty of water beasts all around our camp right here. So we're going to do our game drive out there. If you have any sort of questions, please do not forget to put them down into the comment section below. As we progress, there's just millions of water beasts everywhere. We're going to try check how the herds are doing out there. Water beasts are in full swing out here and it's quite incredible. Already just at the front here, as you can see, there's uh, lots of water beasts. They're just around the camp. This is literally, you know, a couple of seconds away from the camp and then you're already seeing big herds of water beasts all around. And it has been really great that uh, we had, um, yesterday we had a very big storm in the, uh, during the night more likely, but also for the last three, four days we had uh, lots of rains somehow always in the afternoon. So basically the, um, the grasses have been turned green and these guys are absolutely enjoying their, their food in, you know, in a good manner. I think they're saying good afternoon to me guys, which is absolutely very special. As you can see, they're all moving. They were all down there. I think they, uh, they went to drink some water in the afternoon as, you know, um, it might get really hot sometimes in the afternoon, especially by this time of the year. And um, they have gone down to a certain valley down there. There's a drainage area where it has a lot of water there. And um, now they're all moving from the uh, low, um, low area towards the higher vantage point. This also might tend to apply to be more like anti-predation sort of behavior whereby if they be on high vantage point they cannot be really vulnerable to predators. As now you understand that uh, water beasts are always being um, driven by the rains. They are more like water dependent animals that need water almost like every single day. So they have that ability of smelling rains from hundreds of kilometers away and through that then they can uh, utilize every sort of food resource in the Serengeti and that's why they're very successful. Okay, there's a dove coring somewhere up there but this is just great. Guys I'm telling you we are one minute away from the camp and the migration is just right here. I've not even moved my foot away. This is this is very special you know like you're inside your rooms you can hear the uh, water beast outside of your room which is amazing I think. Um, it's always it has always been great. Uh, it doesn't matter how many times I've seen the migrating water beast, but to me it's they are very very special. Okay, I'm just gonna drive forward a little bit and see um, if there's any more other group because I can see these ones are all moving from down there. I just want to see beyond what we have and then um, have that sort of a perspective of how many world beasts are we dealing with. Ah, this is just very special. They're literally just in front of me and they're crossing just in front of me here. It's quite amazing. There are some youngsters here. All these stones are two babies. And most of these babies, they were born um, around uh, January, February, March down the southern Serengeti. Now this is their first time stepping up onto the northern Serengeti. So it's also, uh, I think they're also having that special feeling. Okay guys, we're still uh, on the verge of the water based migration and I've just come across another big group out here enjoying their green lush grasses. These are, all these plains here are full of wild beasts everybody, full of wild beasts. And now we are trying to go around some rocky areas which are just very close where these guys are. Try to see if we can see any cat that is trying to sneak around for these guys. Wait a minute, I think it's just something moving down the bushes. Oh no, it's it's just a bird. <laughs> One of those moments whereby you think there's a tail that just swished 
around the bushes somewhere but it's just a bird that just flew in so there's this bird we call them the barefaced go away bird uh, which of course they have really long tails that it is just going from one bush to another um, which was quite interesting I thought that was something with the black tail which means maybe a leopard you know anything like that anyways <laughs> So the main reason why I have parked over here guys because there is a beautiful bird that is going to walk in front of us here. That is called the Southern Ground Hornbill. Southern Ground Hornbill. They are uh, the biggest species of all the hornbill species and they like eating from the ground. Okay, So they forage around um, from morning to the evening until when they find somewhere to roost up on the trees but they're just beautiful they're so huge originally these guys were from South Africa and uh, well in South Africa they got killed so much by then they said if you cannot see a southern ground hornbill that means you're not very lucky you are having a bad luck so most of the people actually kill them and most of them they shifted from South Africa went to uh, Central Africa and finally reached to uh, the Eastern Africa but nowadays if you're gonna see a South African um, like the, the, the southern ground hornbill in South Africa you're basically a very lucky person just because there are not so many of them well that's how it is but uh, they're just beautiful birds they're very huge black and whenever they fly they usually uh, kind of show us their, their white uh, primary wings which is very very uh, beautiful now there are two of them i think that should be a male and a female just walking onto these grasses foraging slowly and they're just you know having their supper or something i think one of them just got a grasshopper somewhere here the first one there but it's just amazing see when you're even trying to find leopards that are not showing up then you have other beautiful things that walk around the Russo and Getty Plains it's just you know millions of water beasts I think you guys can hear them they're just all over the plains out here around the Malakuri Hills so being onto this uh, short grasses like this then enables them to see where the predators are actually coming so this is quite a, like a survival mode also they won't really prefer sort of like long grasses at all but these short grasses are just perfect for them they're just scattered all over and while I'm over here also I'm currently watching the sunset as it's setting on the western side of the Serengeti and in this this is one of those occasions where my camera absolutely doesn't do justice Those are the calls from the youngsters mostly you find uh, sometimes if one of the youngsters has lost the mama uh, whenever they cross the river sometimes they kind of like lost lose each other on that process um, then the youngster will start making such kind of calls now that is from a big male the louder one you're, you're hearing just beautiful you know it's so peaceful here birds are calling water beasts of course they're calling uh, there's just different uh, different calls as now most of the predators are also coming but the most important thing again guys which is absolutely beautiful is the sunset that we're gonna have so I think we're just gonna have a very gorgeous um, sunset as the Sun now it's setting towards the Western as you can see everything now it's glorifying into that gorgeous golden light I myself too I'm absolutely glorifying beautiful experience here one of my favorite hours is always like when the Sun is setting and you know just getting those things in golden lights it's absolutely beautiful you can hear the robin chats Wow so basically all these water beasts here they'll start moving up onto the hills to get away from the uh, low vantage points because otherwise then they'll they'll get uh, they'll be vulnerable to uh, predators because you gotta think that if the predator has to chase you downhill like that then it's much easier to catch you more than chasing you uphill so for now we're just gonna get a little bit of that sunset if you can if you can get it on the camera though it's just beautiful now start sinking down into the horizon full of trees well as you can see there guys now the sun is just 
be sinking so fast as soon as when it gets to that level the sun just you know vanishes so quickly it's unbelievable now here the Serengeti comes alive in terms of predators they start waking up and start finding food hyenas leopards lions and it's just right there I think in a couple of seconds that sun is going to be out completely look at the colors and the skies though it's just amazing this is why the Northern Serengeti is quite uh, unique because of the landscape and the landscape provides really good sunrises and good sunsets. Well, it has been beautiful uh, game drive guys in terms of the uh, uh, migration up here in the northern part of the Serengeti. And I would like to thank everybody who has been there uh, from the start of the safari until the end. So my name is Stephen again all the way from Lemala Kimson Lodges here at Lemala Curry Hills Camp. And I will see you guys on the next video again when we're going to do another sunset or sunrise safari.